All right, hello everybody. My name is Kirsten. Welcome back to our 4-H Food Revolution um, kitchen science experiment. So as I said yesterday, today we're gonna be doing two kitchen science experiments. The first one will be a baking soda and vinegar volcano, and the second one will be making something called oobleck. So we're gonna start with the baking soda and vinegar experiment. Um, so first you're gonna need to gather all of your materials, um, which I have right here next to me. And if you look above my head, there's a mirror here. Um, so you can see what I'm doing from the front on as well as from the mirror. So to get started with our baking soda and vinegar volcanoes, we're gonna need a few things. Um, the most basic of those would be vinegar, any kind of vinegar is fine, and baking soda. Now at the minimum, this is all that you need to have a fun um, science experiment going on in the kitchen. Um, but you can also spice it up a little and add some food coloring, which we'll do today, and some dish soap, which makes it more foamy. Um, and you can get yourself an assortment of containers to create your volcanoes in. Um, so we'll do three today and see what happens. So, get started here. Um, you're gonna wanna have some measuring cups with you to help measure out your ingredients. So the first one we'll do will be inside this water bottle and we'll do just vinegar and just baking soda. Um, and then the second one, we'll add some food coloring and some other stuff and see how it changes the reaction. Um, and then for the finale, we have a cool little um, volcano looking bunt pan here and we'll see what happens with that. Um, all right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do, open your container. Um, the experiment procedure that I'm following calls for one tablespoon of baking soda and a half a cup of vinegar. Um, and of course you can play around with these measurements and see how uh, large your volcano eruption is depending on how much of each ingredient you add. Um, for those of you who are watching that may be leaders, this is something fun that you can do um, with youth to get them learning about questioning things and um, trying to change the methods that they're following. Um, so I'm just gonna get my measuring utensils out here and try my best not to make a mess on the table, adding them to my uh, water bottle here. And this could be very exciting or this could be very anticlimactic, but that's the whole point of science is seeing what works and what doesn't. So. We might get a cool volcano or we might get a very unexciting volcano, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. All right, so we've got our baking soda added and next we're going to add half a cup of vinegar. See what happens. Oh, here it comes. See if we get an eruption here. <laughs> All right, so this reaction starting to fizzle down a little bit. Um, clearly you can see we did not make it out of the spout of the volcano. Um, so this is, leaders again, one of those ways you can experiment with your kids and say, oh, our volcano didn't erupt. How can we change this to make it better for the next time? So there's one way you can do it. And we'll move on to the next way here where we add some more fun stuff. Also, I should mention if you have caps, not to put the cap on because this reaction produces gas and might have more than just a volcanic eruption um, if you cover the reaction. So uh, the next one we're going to do is into this vase. Hopefully this will be more of an exciting volcano. Um, and this time we're going to add a little bit of dish soap and some food coloring to make it more exciting. The, the dish soap uh, makes the foam that you saw in this reaction uh, a little bit more bubbly. So hopefully we'll get a bit of a bigger eruption. So add my baking soda here. Again, trying not to make a mess. I should add that um, when you do those experiments at home, you might want to consider getting something to cover your table up and contain the mess a little bit. <clears throat> and vinegar. Not ready. And we're doing the same measurements for this one. So a tablespoon of baking soda, half a cup of vinegar. Um, but we're also gonna add 
two tablespoons of water, which I have over here. There's one. And there's two. Maybe you guys would want to add a, uh, a funnel to your list of materials here. Um, and we'll also add a tablespoon of dish soap. And you'll have a really good smelling volcano depending on the dish soap that you use. All right, so once we've got that all added, now we can choose a color for our volcano. My favorite color is yellow, so I'm gonna use yellow. Um, but you guys at home can use whatever color you'd like. You can mix some food color. Uh, leaders, that's another good activity that you can do with your kids, um, learning about colors and primary, secondary colors, making um, some more exciting volcanoes here. All right, so I've added my color. Just give that a little stir here. See that it's changing color. And now we'll add our vinegar and see what happens. Ah, there we go. Now we've got an eruption and I still haven't added all of the vinegar. Um, I'm not going to just because <laughs> that's going to make quite the mess. Um, but there we have it. A very exciting volcanic eruption using just baking soda and vinegar. And that's one of the things that's fun about these experiments. This is all stuff that you can find in your kitchen. Um, fun activities to do with your kids at home or in a big group, something at a summer camp or other day activity like what we would do here at Food Revolution. Um, and it looks pretty cool. So imagine having, you know, six or seven of these uh, volcanoes erupting at once, all different colors. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna shift myself over to this side of the table. I'm gonna come move the camera so you guys can still see what I'm doing here. Um, we'll do uh, our uh, cleanup after, <laughs> after the show. So the next thing that we're gonna do is make something that's called oobleck. Um, so, oobleck is quite an interesting compound, I would call it. Um, it's made of only two ingredients, cornstarch, which I have right here, and water. And you can add other things too to make it more exciting, like same thing we did with the volcano. You can add some food coloring, mix up some fun colors. Um, but when you mix these two things together, um, quite an interesting thing happens. So the the compound is something that's called a non-Newtonian liquid, and that sounds like a big scary science word, but pretty much what that means is that the way that the particles of water and cornstarch mix together causes the oobleck to react differently depending on how you touch it. So you'll see once we get this mixed up and going, if you apply really quick force, like if I were to, to slap it, it acts as a solid, but if you were to apply slow force, it acts as a liquid, or we'll have it in this bowl, you can tip the bowl around and it looks like a liquid, but if you jiggle it really fast, it looks like a solid. Um, and that's just due to the nature of the oobleck, and that's something interesting that you could teach to your 4-H um, youth about how compounds react with each other and what that looks like depending on how you mix things together. So, I'm just gonna adjust my camera here a little bit more. Make sure we can see what's going on. Okay, so to make oobleck, um, and there are a bunch of different recipes to make oobleck and different ways that you can um, put it together, but the one that I'm gonna be using today requires two cups of cornstarch and one cup of water. And then you mix it together until it comes almost like a, a slimy liquid and let it sit for a minute. And then you can start playing with it and see how it acts. So, clean up my measuring cups over here just a little bit. All right, so we'll start off with two cups of cornstarch. Again, trying not to make too much of a mess here. There's one. Um, and for the leaders that are watching, this is also another opportunity to do a little bit more teaching when you're doing these experiments if you want to talk about um, measuring different units of measurement and if you have a recipe that calls for um, some sort of 
a regular fraction of measurement, how that you might use math to work that out um, with measuring cups. A uh, good way to introduce youth to skills in the kitchen and do some fun science at the same time. All right, so I've added my cornstarch, and now I'm going to add one cup of water. All right, and mix that up. <clears throat> and this is another recipe that you can very easily add more exciting things to. Um, so you could add some food coloring to this one. You can also add some more um, sensory details, I guess you could call them. So you could put in um, beads, you could put in sprinkles, or just little uh, like sparkles, glitter, things like that, just to make it a little bit more um, exciting to look at. Um, and also just gives um, youth an opportunity for um, a creative outlet. Uh, there's also different recipes of Ublak as well. So you guys can see, it's a little bit far away, but if you look up in the mirror here, um, you can see that this is starting to get a little bit soupy. Um, there are some chunks, and I'll actually come and hold this up to the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Um, whoa, and I'll make a mess while I'm at it. Um, there are some chunks in it but it is mostly liquid. And once this is fully mixed together, um, you'll be able to see how it behaves differently depending on how you touch it. Um, now, one of the interesting things about Ublek is that you can follow a recipe, but it's kind of trial and error. So what I mean by that is that my Ublek here is quite soupy. Um, yes, it's pretty soupy. So if I wanted, I could add some more cornstarch and see what happens. Um, again, this is a good opportunity to get you thinking critically, doing experiments like this, because um, if your experiment doesn't turn out the way you want it to the first time, you kind of got to troubleshoot, problem solve, figure out what went wrong, um, and try again to make it better the next time. So, all right, I think my oobleck is all set here. So I'll put my tools to the side, and if you watch in the mirror, or maybe I should use this. Would you like to come see the oobleck? <laughs> so, Marianne is here. Um, she, you, you can be the, uh, the, the tester of, of the oobleck. Okay. Um, so I was just explaining, oobleck is interesting because depending on how you touch it, it behaves differently. Yes. So if you touch it real fast, it's like a solid, but if you swirl it around, it acts like a liquid. And they got a very nice close-up of it, uh, how it acts like a liquid when I spilled it over there. <laughs> like a liquid, but then if I put pressure on it, you're saying, yep, it goes mm -hmm. from solid to liquid. So when I put pressure on it, it becomes a solid in my hand, and then it melts as I open it. <gasps> That's so cool. It is cool. It's very messy, but it is, it is cool. Really, oh, it's super And if messy. you, if, I don't know if they can see in the mirror, but here, I can use the, Oh yeah, they can if see. You, if you hit it real hard. Now I'm going to go wash. It acts like a solid. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go wash your hands. If I can hold this closer to the mirror here. You do want to not pour that whole thing down the drain. Yes. Because of the clog. I don't know if you mentioned that. Like I did right not. There. But that is an excellent point. So, that's a very good segue. Now that we have completed our experiments here, um, we'll talk about cleanup a little bit. Um, so we were dealing with some chemicals, for lack of a better word. Um, we had some reactions occur, so we want to be careful what we do with these things when we're done with them. Baking soda and vinegar is perfectly safe to go down the sink. Um, some people actually use that combination as a drain cleaner. So you can have some fun doing some signs in the kitchen and also clean your drain. So that can go right down the drain. Um, the oobleck, however, you should pour into the garbage can because this will very easily clog your drain. Um, unless maybe you pour some baking soda vinegar volcano juice down after it, uh, but I would not recommend doing that. So when you're all done, make sure you dispose of your um, science byproducts the appropriate way, clean up your space, um, and go get some friends and have some more fun in the kitchen. So that concludes today's um, kitchen science experiments. I will be back tomorrow to do some more fun ones. Keep your eye out for a post on our page that tells you what materials you need for tomorrow's experiments. And I will see y'all tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thanks so much.